This week, I get to work on my Prelude some more, which means two new products for the Honda H22 engine. The first is a billet upper water neck, which I'll get into. The second is a billet spark plug cover, and I'm actually gonna take you guys today on the journey of creating a spark plug cover from start to finish. I haven't made one yet, but hopefully by the end of this video, I will have one that's done. So product number one is an upper water neck. This is the factory H22 upper water neck. It mounts on the front of the cylinder head. It has a fan switch sticking out of the side of it. And for some reason, Honda decided to make it angled at about 45 degrees away from the engine. Because this is angled, the radiator hose actually has to come over this way away from the exhaust manifold and then turn back the other direction and then go into the radiator. I'm sure Honda had some reason for this, but I think it's gonna look a lot better just going straight to the radiator with a straight hose. Also, because this is going into my third gen Prelude, I don't need a fan switch on this right here because the fan switch on a third gen Prelude is actually in the radiator itself. So I can eliminate the switch, which will get rid of some wiring and clean up the look of the front of the cylinder head and straighten out the upper hose so that I don't have some weird bend thing going to the radiator. Let me show you the CAD and the finished product. So this was actually a pretty simple part to design. It just took a little bit of measuring of this bottom flange area and the O-ring groove. Now I'm not gonna be reusing the factory O-ring. I'm just gonna be using an aftermarket O-ring that we're gonna supply. So it was pretty much just two dimensional line drawings around this flange to create the shape of the bottom of the part. Here's the finished solid model, the 3D printed sample for test fit, and the finished product. So because we already make a couple of products that use a Dash 16 ORB thread, I already had all the geometry and actually all of the tool paths from our other products. So creating this end of this part was actually very simple after I had all of the geometry done for the flange. Then using a simple loft cut, I was able to transition the shape of this port to a circle and just a couple of simple waterline tool paths on the outside and inside. Pretty easy part. So the cool part about putting a ORB port thread onto the nose of this flange is that it gives people the option to either use a hose barb fitting and then this can connect to just a regular radiator hose or you can actually just thread in an AN fitting and if you wanted to use AN fittings and hoses on your setup this would easily do that without any welding or having even different parts. So for example even if let's say this was mounted to the head and you decided you did need to have an angle off the end of this, a 90 degree or a 45, you could actually just go buy an ORB port adapter fitting that would screw in here and it would angle the hose off at whatever angle you needed. So let's go see what this thing looks like on the car. So here's the standard hose outlet off the P13 H22 cylinder head. So you can see from the top, the radiator hose goes over towards the headlight instead of towards the radiator. Now I'm pretty sure all of the H22 powered Preludes have the same sort of kinked radiator hose setup, meaning the outlet on the radiator is not over here somewhere making the hose straight. It's typically always about here in between the port and the number four runner. So obviously, instead of having a twisty windy hose, I thought it would look a lot nicer just to have a straight hose. So let's put the new fitting on. So here's what the new fitting mounted. Now you can see the radiator hose is pretty much just gonna be a straight shot. I think it'll end up being much cleaner looking than having a bend in that hose like the factory one. And like I mentioned earlier, I actually eliminated the fan switch that was on the side of this because on the third gen Prelude, the fan switch is actually in the base of the radiator. This is gonna eliminate having an extra plug, uh, a part of the wiring harness that comes out into the front of the engine. And I think overall, it'll just look a little bit nicer. All right, this is the factory spark plug cover on an H22 engine. It's normally silver, this one's been painted black. If you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with all of this, but it's probably good just to go over it for anybody that hasn't seen this before. Now, unlike a B-series valve cover, which has a somewhat flat top to it. The H22 valve cover actually has not only a ramp up in the back, but it has a really interesting curve over the center of it. It's a very smooth top. 
It transitions from the front of the valve cover to the back of the valve cover without any real hard angles. There's a bunch of people that already make aftermarket spark plug covers for this valve cover, but, but the thing that I noticed is that none of them actually follow that nice smooth contour over the top shape of the valve cover. So I wanted to come up with something that was an accessory that just accentuates the nice smooth top of the valve cover, but gives that added aesthetic of a billet CNC machine part. So because the valve cover tapers from the front to the back, the back is higher and it has a contour to it, the profile shape of this is actually a little tricky to draw. So these sidewalls being vertical, the top surface is not in any clear relation to the front and the back. The only thing that's really known is that the front and the back are parallel and these mounting surfaces are perpendicular to it. So instead of starting with a profile shape and extruding it out and then trying to pocket everything and remove everything that isn't the part, I decided to start off by tracing this side edge of the part and just drawing that and then extruding it over a length and then just adding the holes and putting a cap on the end of it and then radiusing these edges. Let me show you the geometry and the first 3D printed part. Like I mentioned, I just started by drawing this shape right here and that's this shape right here. I'm calling it an extruded shape because I'm thinking of it as, say, a piece of extruded metal that's forced through a die to create a profile shape. Then after I extrude the shape this way, then I'm adding all of the mounting features to it. And here's the solid model. As I rotate it over, you can see that this is pretty much just like the OEM one, just missing the Honda logo and the Honda lettering. I wanted to start with a simple shape like this because I wasn't quite sure if putting any type of additional features or design would take away from the simplicity that I'm going for on the top of my valve cover. And starting with a simple design like this, something that's clean on top, I can always go back and add a design feature to the top of it later if I decide that I want to. After I'm happy with the basic design, then it's time to 3D print one and just verify the fitment. So here's the first 3D printed one. Now you can see what I was talking about, how on the side of the valve cover, I wanted to design it so that it follows the shape of the top side of the valve cover. All the aftermarket ones that I've seen are pretty much flat. And so what a flat one would do is when you're looking at it from the side, it would line up here and it would line up here, but it would be under the surface here. And I always thought that that kind of looked a little bit weird. Now the next challenge was figuring out how you hold onto a part that is not only thin, but also doesn't have any good clamping surfaces. It also doesn't have any flat planes that the part sets down evenly onto. So the first operation is to cut out the inside of the part. And what I did is I added a couple of threaded bosses onto the inside of this that I can bolt to so that I can flip it over, bolt it to a fixture, and then machine the top side. So let's see what it looks like machining the bottom side first. As always, we start from a solid billet and whittle away the part. This is our spark plug cover after the first operation. With the first side done, now it's time to figure out how are we gonna hold it for the second side. So here's the fixture that I came up with for the second side operation. It gives me two steps that the part can sit on and then four pads that the little flanges that mount to the valve cover are gonna rest on. And that's just so that they have something to support them while I machine the top side of them. Here's the part sitting on top of the fixture. So these pads are gonna support the flanges and these two steps are what are gonna locate the bottom of the part so that it's normal to the sides of the part and I can easily machine around the outside of it. From the bottom of the fixture, six M6 screws are gonna get inserted to hold the part to the fixture, and then the fixture is gonna get loaded into the machine. Let me show you the second operation of the top of the part. So here's our part after the first operation, then it gets flipped over into the fixture, and then we run the second. And if everything goes right, 
That should make a good part. Now that I know that the 3D model fits correctly, and we've just finished programming the top and the bottom of the part, as well as the fixture for holding onto it, let's go out into the shop and make one. All right, here we go. H22 plug cover fixture operation one. First operation finished, now it gets flipped over for the second side. Alright, first plug cover, op one, bottom side. Top one completed. Everything went pretty smoothly. So the next thing to do is to put our fixture back into the machine, pick up our center origin, mount our plug cover to the fixture, load it in the machine, and run the second operation. All right, up two, here we go. Let's see how it fits on the car. Wow, I'm really impressed with how this came out. This thing looks really good. All right, let's throw it on the car. I don't, I don't even know what to say. It looks so good. So one thing that I did notice is that the 3D printed version seemed to fit really well. This one, the finalized version, the hole locations are off very, very, very slightly. So I just have to make a small adjustment on those, which is easy to do in the programming. But man, that is exactly what I wanted. So I'm just still crazy impressed with how good that spark plug cover came out. But by the time you guys see this video, we've probably already put those upper water necks on our website. So those are available now. I'm gonna get back to making those small changes to that spark plug cover just to get it to fit absolutely perfect. I wanna go back and change a little bit of the programming and chamfer a couple of the edges that I missed in the very beginning. Overall, I don't think I'm gonna change that much on that spark plug cover. Uh, so hopefully I can get a batch of those run and maybe get those available on the website next week. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.